Hello everyone, and thank you for registering in the Fun with the Palette Knife workshop. My name is Bogdan Korol Konikowski, and I'm an artist, painter, and also president of the Artisa Society of the Arts in Edmonton, of course, Alberta. I have a privilege to teach you how to paint a cityscape with a palette knife using texture, expressive brush strokes, and heavy paint application. Soon you will turn to a palette knife artist par excellence. For your convenience, in addition to this instructional step-by-step -step video, I have provided you with a complimentary PowerPoint presentation. And thank you to my wife, Isabella Ozelski, an artist painter, for assisting me with the production of this video. Now, let's start our creative adventure. Okay, and today we will be painting Eiffel Tower in much impressionistic style following Mr. Afremov. So the most important is to establish first horizon line and now we want to have our Eiffel Tower. I would not bring it to the top, I will make sure that it's perfectly in the center, more or less. And then I see two parts of the Eiffel Tower, one there and then will be the other one. Notice that my lines are very very heavy and I'm not worried about leaving them as such because I will work with palette knife and by working with palette knife I will be able to cover lots lots of lots of lights. So another part. So there are the legs, the whole construction of our, maybe that's going too far, of our Eiffel Tower. Very good. And then we have the arch going perfectly in the center that you can indicate. See, I have my point somewhere here, my vanishing point, and I can see that those parts are going further. So I'm just leaving them like this, or I should even move here more. Okay, good. So you see, that's my drawing. And I see that there are lamps coming there, and there will be, I want to make sure that they follow the same line. So my lamps will come here like this, you see? Just for myself the information, just to know what will happen. So we will start with the lightest colors, and my suggestion would be that we start working with yellows and reds. I always like to use yellow color here. I'm going, oh, I have my brush, uh, my palette knife is dirty. There's a little bit of the purple placed next to my yellow, and that's why I got those strokes. Whoa, so, how come I got this color there? There. I also have to watch my Eiffel Tower because the Eiffel Tower will be yellow so I can actually go right away with yellow on it see like this and I can apply a little bit thinner layer that I can still see through the pencil marks that would help me simply making sure that the paint is everywhere covering the structure of my Eiffel Tower and after that, I can come with some white spots here, blending them, not blending necessary. You see, whatever I want to do, I will. If it's necessary to blend, I will blend. If I just want to leave the strokes of white visible, I'm leaving them. I use a little bit of orange right away there. And I can also use a tiny bit of purple because I want to have a purple underneath of it. And I will do it so I can see the construction of my Eiffel Tower. Not necessary that I have to do it this way, but I think it would help me to see better what's going on. Up from there, see, since I have on my bar some of the paint, which is a purple, dark purple, I would right away bring it to the edges of my paper. See, that's my palette. And then with those strokes, patches I call them, you will go and you will introduce the color. We also will have the darker color on the, the ground. And I'm just, what I'm doing, notice, I'm right away establishing what is where. So for example, the main color here will be the blue one. And it will be a cooler one here. So I will certainly apply some other colors into it, but not yet. And of course, I can also afford to bring some changes, the one that I like and I think that will um, very much inform 
my painting, making it stronger and more beautiful. So be free to introduce any changes you want to make your painting looking better. Okay, so if you like to change the color, certainly do it. See, I like this combination very much. Sure, I make everything lighter in this section, but not yet. So introducing more of the purple color, especially by the sides. Move to another color, and I think we want to introduce a little bit of the red. Wow, look at this. Okay, so just patch, 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 and having fun. Remember, the most important is having fun. Then a little bit more of the purple. Mm -hmm. And patches, patches. Again, I don't have a huge canvas, that's why I will do it slightly differently than a fair, a fair move. He had he used huge canvases, so it was so easy to work with palette knife. I have to use slightly, just slightly changing the strokes, not very much. So you see, helping myself, I will go with a little bit heavier application of paint next to my Eiffel Tower. And then from there, I will move to cross hatching. Do we have some colors coming through? Of course we do. So don't forget, this is an important part as well of our Eiffel Tower here. And we still want to come here yeah, with paint and really exaggerate, not exaggerate, there's no exaggeration, but it's forever. See a little bit darker color, especially here when we come to this um, meeting point to the corner. This is good. This is good, this is good, and then definitely coming here with a darker color, a little bit more, and then we have those beautiful colors coming here, and then we can blend everything, you see? That's so much fun. Now those colors will change. I think we can introduce a little bit of red just on the barrels to make the connection. So now I can introduce yellow, yellow with some patches. Notice just tip of on my brush, uh, palette knife, sorry, and then I'm going with it just a little bit here and there. Okay, I also noticed that I will need to have this color coming through here. And because it's green mostly, so I can easily go with yellow, very thin layer, notice. Again, not too much paint, just enough to cover the surface and because we still want to see the lines of the pencil. Yeah, very good. From there, we are going back to our section here and there, and then we will blend some of this yellow color just for the brightness on the top. So you see, I'm still bringing some of the white here because I really want it to shine, and then some of the yellow, and I want to get a heavier paint application, so that's why I'm doing this. So make sure that the yellow is clean. And I noticed that this in, also in the center, there's another color. Ooh, I have to bring it there. Then, see a little bit stronger yellow on the bottom and a little bit stronger next to the purple and then white. So I'm doing it. Try to be very careful and go with the center part here. So you see, using just the edge of my palette knife, I will shape it a little bit more, indicating that there's another part here. And I probably have to bring some orange color there. Yeah, okay. I still want to go and shape the legs. Going like this, and then going on the other side with my palette knife. Mm -hmm. And then it's darker underneath. So I will go with some. Again, this purple works so well here. I love it. I just love it. See, and then a little bit of this on this side. And then a little bit more here. Okay. This and this. Fantastic. Look at this. on the Eiffel Tower. And then this 
very light purple color. I think I need to introduce it a little bit more. Good. See, in some places. Yeah, a little bit of it here. And then I have this other purple still here. Wow. And then I for sure here and there. See, like this. Now I'm looking at the sections on my painting. I'm not rushing with anything, I'm just comparing what I have here and I noticed that in this section we still want to get the green. So how do we get green? Notice what I'm doing. I'm applying blue on it. And my blue is very powerful and it does create the very interesting green for me. Now when I want to have a different green, I also have this one and I want to see just playing, playing on my yellow. Right, you see here and there, very good. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, we have all those fantastic, fantastic flower um, colors. Wow, so bright. Okay, even here, now I can, and this is me, I like to apply a little bit, like piece of this blue here, because this blue does miracle for our painting. Make it more interesting, you see, like this, and then lighter somewhere on the top. That's so fantastic. And then I will still help myself to see this part a little bit lighter. So I can even go with my yellow and some white. But I do want to have now very, very bright blue color. So that bright, I want to have white with a tiny bit of this beautiful blue here. See, like this, and it has to spread. So I have to make sure that the color will not get too much contaminated. It has to have this fantastic effect of light. So right now I'm going and creating lights. There where is my, where are my lamps? Following the line, notice. Coming closer, closer, closer with it. And I, I see I can a little bit uh, bring a little bit warmer colors around, so I will do it in the second. See, still here and there, because otherwise I will lose it. It will be not the same effect, so this is good. And then some of the orange, you see, will be good to have it there too. So bring it there where the lamps are. Not too much, not too little. So again, it's a play with the game almost. See how much can we apply to make it really working well. Okay, I like what is happening here, except that I want to apply a little bit more of those colors here as well. I need to go with my blue to the section of, of the straight here. So I really have to lighten it and have to make sure that my brush is clean. So now I get some blue, and with this blue, I'm going there, see? Oh la la, look at this, looks like reflection, love it. Okay, like this, and then this light here. And so it makes much more sense. This is too strong, so we want to come back and bring some of the blue in it as well. And then I bring blue into the painting to connect everything together. This is still not perfect, but it will be because I'm bringing my white into my tail. So this would be good. It needs some white, otherwise it's too transparent and doesn't do what we want this to. So this is the beautiful connection. A little bit more of it here and there. We want to have a happy, happy painting. See? And then. And I really like the effect, you see? Then I can bring some of the blue into the section of the Eiffel Tower. Like there. And then. And then. Yeah, a little bit more. There. I still want to have little bit more of the blue by the legs of it. I call it legs. And then we have this um, important part because there's like a um, 
fence almost that you see here that we have to indicate that it is and it's also on the top so I also have to come here have a darker color there there's no yellow there just has to be let's see maybe yellow just a little bit there and I want to get the darker yellow right underneath of this leg yeah. oh la la that looks good you see it what's happening here whoa and then a little bit of this part like this. You can't have too much because when you put too much, then again you destroy the effect. So I want to avoid. See, this is good, but then it becomes too thick. So I have to go with my orange here back and bring also the orange through and then maybe skin up those parts here. Fantastic. So the one more thing that I want to do, let's see, we'll come here. Still with this beautiful color underneath, like this. I like what is happening. I don't like the red here. Ooh, la la, I didn't intend to put it there. We need to have more white and blue. Okay, like this. Less. Then putting it very heavy. Okay, and I still think that we want to come with some yellow. There where you have those lamps because this became a little bit too dark to me. Okay, like this, like this. Oh, I don't know what has happened here. And then we should have a very, very light color for the lamps. So the lamps have to come here like sticks almost, you see? Mm -hmm. Like this. See, they are there. This purple color and get the pattern part for my lamps. You see, like this, and then a little bit more of the purple, a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. But the color is still not luminous enough for me. See, maybe there's too much of the of the green here, so I have to go back to it. Maybe scrape even and bring it back the lighter colors mm -hmm. look at this a bit stronger mm -hmm. just a little bit stronger a little bit stronger here I like the effect on the ground see there that I, I want to get lighter colors through here so I will simply erase what I have there but I think it's too much you see then I can get those beautiful colors back okay. mm -hmm. I will use white again in this section up to here and then I bring a little bit of my blue so you see just a little bit blending it okay? I'm having lots of fun and then having those patches here so I don't like this and like this and like this and like that and like that look at dark and dark wow look at that look at those colors here and there. The last reds that we apply will go around the light. There. 
surface and I would apply yellow onto, onto those lights because I really want to indicate that they are the lights. So you see a little bit more emphasis, a little bit there, right? You see, so it's not just purple as a dark color, but you have introduction of some other colors as well. And you notice, I like what is going there. I just want to bring it a little bit more here. Yeah. We all know it. Okay, so now just the last patches. Um, coming through here. See, and our beautiful painting. I still have yellow, so wait, I have yellow, I have to use it. Okay. Then it's done, except that we have still some of this beautiful red, and why not to apply it right away? Is there any, I think we can bring it somewhere here, maybe not so much, maybe that was a little bit too much. So we bring it there and a little bit more of this darker color will come on one side here yeah? and there. Right, so let us just look at the last patches and we are done then. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! So I think we are done with our painting. You have to judge it by yourself how you like it. I hope that you enjoyed I enjoyed this process and will be now ready to work on your own Eiffel Tower and I will show you just briefly what will happen when we take the masking tape because it's important that you see the difference what it does when the masking tape is used and just want to make this edge a little bit heavier to really show the trottoir fantastic see let me look this is good, we have this very strong point of light, but I think we still can be a little bit more precise here, like this, and then light, light, and light. Very strong light in this section, right? So something is happening there, we don't know exactly what, but something is for sure, for sure there. It has to be very, very even there. See, so this is an important part that we don't forget. Wow, look at this. So we have our painting done in the style and the top we'll remove later on. So have a good day. Enjoy working on your own painting. I'll see you next time. Bye.